irrigation. Thanks again for the Fanta Buena Pablo. Thanks for showing me around. Now, what do we have here? This is our small scale irrigation. What do you know about irrigation? I know that irrigation is the artificial application of water to the soil for the purpose of supplying sufficient moisture to the crops. That is a very specific and correct answer. I'm not finished though. Okay. It is usually practiced in dry areas, during dry spells, and in growing rice pads. Oh, all right, young scientist. Do you know all the types? Um, surface? That is one. There is surfaced, overhead, subsurface, and the drip or trickle irrigation. The top use depends on factors such as money available, topography of the land, top of soil, water availability, and the crops being grown. Uh, well, I only really know surface irrigation. We use our canals to bring the water into the fields. Ah, you are speaking of flood irrigation. Now, before I get ahead of myself, you should know that the type of surface irrigation is also dependent on topography, amount of water, and soil type. Yes, flood irrigation. We use this by having water flow to our field from Lake Victoria through canals, as I mentioned before. It is pretty inexpensive to make and maintain, but we have little control of the water distribution. Do you ever try furrow irrigation? Uh, I'm familiar with it, but we don't really practice it. Furrow uses the source water to flow through gates into furrows. The water wets the soil, and since the crops are planted next to the ridge, they are watered. Yes, the advantages are that it reduces the risk of fungal diseases and is relatively cheap to establish and maintain. And the disadvantage is that a lot of water is lost through evaporation and ground seepage. Also, soil erosion is more likely to occur. Mm -hmm. Now, what about basin irrigation? Uh, I don't think so. Let me explain. It might jolt your memory. It is mostly used for rice fields with clay soils since it requires the land to hold water for a long time. The field is flooded using dikes or levees to control the depth. Ah, uh, yes. But the land needs to be flat for it to work, right? I have seen this near West Cano Cabonio. Ideally, flat ground is needed or else it becomes very expensive to use. This method results in accumulation of salt in the soil, though. It also requires a lot of rebuilding, too, if the leaves break, which is costly. Now, what about the other irrigation methods you mentioned? What is up with those? Ah, ever the scholar, Sam. Subsurface irrigation involves laying pipes underground for water to pass through the holes and water the plants. Our few advantages are that it minimizes labor and uses water much more efficiently but it is very expensive to buy and maintain the pipes. I see. That would be awesome if I didn't have to take so much time to water the plants. To save time, I fill bottles and put them next to the few crops we have at home to let it slowly drip out. Ingenious! That is a kind of irrigation called drip or trickle irrigation. The main way it is used, though, is pipes are laid around the crop space with tiny holes that slowly water the plants. Little water is wasted, but again, very expensive. Okay, these all do seem expensive and for larger scale farms. What if I had unlimited capital? What is the most posh irrigation system you could suggest? See, you are planning ahead for when you start your farm. You could look into overhead or sprinkler irrigation systems. This involves installing sprinklers that have high pressure water pumped to them. Of course, it requires a lot of maintenance, but reduces labor, water wasted, and time needed. I can't wait to install my own sprinkler system. I'll even let you check it out, Buena Pablo. Just make sure to take care of the system or you could be looking at a marsh. Uh, are there any ways to remove the excess water? Yes, 
Just let me run to the washroom, though. All this water talk got me going. I'll be waiting.